Now today we still are not entirely certain if life exists somewhere else out there except for planet Earth. But one of the ways scientists are trying to figure this out is by trying to establish how life started here on planet Earth and then by seeing if similar conditions could be discovered somewhere else out there on some other alien planet or some other alien object somewhere in the universe. And if one day we do discover an object somewhere that does seem to have very similar conditions to early planet Earth, this would imply that life could have started somewhere else out there as well. But even though the scientists have already discovered thousands of different exoplanets out there, not a single one of them seems to resemble planet Earth, and for the most part all of them seem to be really extreme. But it doesn't mean that similar conditions to early planet Earth could not exist elsewhere despite these planets being so different. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this new study that you can find in the description below that discusses these unusual planets that could exist somewhere out there that despite being extremely different from anything we have in the solar system could still have very similar conditions to early planet Earth and even possess liquid water for billions and billions of years. Long enough for life to develop and to even evolve into something more complex. With the liquid water in this case being the most important component. Mostly because today we believe all of the early life very likely started in early oceans on planet Earth. Oceans that were very likely extremely different from anything we have today. Something we've discussed on the channel many times and you can find some of these videos in the description below. But the main point in this paper is that we really shouldn't focus so much on various planets in habitable zones of their star systems. There could be some planets out there, very extreme planets that look nothing like this at all, that could easily maintain liquid water without the conditions that we currently have on planet Earth. And this paper goes into a lot of detail specifying at least one type of a planet that can easily sustain liquid water without looking like Earth at all. A somewhat dark, gas-like planet on the outskirts of the star system or possibly even a planet we usually refer to as a rogue planet. A planet that does not orbit anything. It sort of travels across the galaxy completely by itself. Because it could have been created by itself or it could have been ejected from an early star system before it changed too dramatically. With the main idea here being really simple. In order for liquid water to exist on any planet, you essentially need to have just the right temperature and just the right pressure. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as planet Earth, but it does have to fall somewhere in the green zone on this phase diagram of water. So for example, any planet with very low pressure is only going to have very limited opportunity for liquid water to exist. But a planet with a lot of pressure actually has quite a lot of different temperature ranges for where liquid water is possible. Although there is obviously a limit to this pressure, which is also visible in this diagram. And so if this is right here on planet Earth, you could technically have a planet with 10,000 times more pressure where liquid water could exist whether the planet was too cold or too hot. In other words, pressure here would actually determine quite a lot. And certain gases would also contribute to the greenhouse effect, thus increasing the temperature overall. We also know that early Earth, 4 to 4.5 billion years ago, was very different from how it is today, both in terms of the atmosphere and the presence of the liquid water on the surface. And more specifically, the atmosphere here was a lot more enriched in things like hydrogen and potentially even helium. And obviously a lot of other things coming from various volcanic eruptions and multiple collisions that were happening very frequently early on in the solar system. And so this very unusual primordial atmosphere that existed for several hundred million years very likely helped the liquid oceans to develop on the planet. But over time, all of this was stripped from the planet with hydrogen and helium escaping into the outer space. With only heavier gases staying behind and eventually creating the atmosphere we know today. But we also know that the larger planets, like for example Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune and Uranus, can easily maintain these hydrogen and helium atmospheres for much much longer, despite the presence of the radiation from the Sun. Whereas some other planets, for example planets farther away from the star system or rogue planets that don't even have a star, can actually maintain these hydrogen and helium conditions because nothing is there to strip it away from them. And so in theory, these planets could easily sustain this atmosphere and could actually exist in a very similar state, not for millions, but for billions of years, assuming that nothing star-like approaches too close to strip the atmosphere. And so based on this assumption, the scientists behind the recent paper decided to model several different types of planets and try to simulate what would happen to them over a period of billions of years, taking into account a lot of different things such as the pressure from the atmosphere, 
the intensity of radiation coming from the potential star, and more importantly, the amount of internal heat generated by the planet itself that would then serve as the main contributor to all of the heat needed for the liquid water to exist. And that's actually the important part, because even though here on Earth, the geothermal energy only represents a fraction of all of the energy we're receiving as a planet from everywhere, most of the energy does come from the Sun itself. On these other planets, planets such as rogue planets or planets far away from their stars, with primordial atmospheres, the internal heat would mean so much more. It would actually add up a tremendous amount of energy into the planetary atmosphere, with all of this energy trapped by the atmosphere itself. Suggesting, of course, that any kind of a geothermal heat, assuming that it stays on the planet, would actually be more than enough to maintain a liquid ocean on the planet for billions of years. With some planets in their calculations and their models, maintaining these liquid oceans for tens of billions of years. Potentially much longer than even planet Earth. We know that on planet Earth, the liquid oceans are going to start disappearing once the sun becomes bright enough, and specifically about 10% brighter than it is today, with all this extra UV radiation stripping the atmosphere and then stripping the oceans as well. All of this will very likely happen in about 1.1 billion years from today. And so at least in theory, these unusual worlds have a potential to sustain liquid oceans much, much longer than planet Earth. And in their calculations, they also found out that any super-Earth, which we know are very common everywhere in the galaxy, with a mass of about 1 to 10 masses of planet Earth, can easily maintain the liquid ocean somewhere on the surface, assuming that it orbits about two astronomical units away from the star or more, or if it has no star at all. But they do require a lot of atmosphere, a lot of pressure, hundreds of times more than planet Earth. But it's very possible for these planets to have these thick atmospheres, assuming that nothing disturbed them over time, and assuming that no star has ever had a chance to strip anything here with the hydrogen and helium staying on the surface. And interestingly enough, not so long ago, the scientists have actually discovered some kind of an unusual rogue planet, very similar in mass to planet Earth, that was discovered accidentally using the so-called gravitational lensing effect. You can find out more about this somewhere right there or in the description below. Now, in theory, this could be one of these planets with liquid oceans. And it's even been suggested before that if some kind of an extraterrestrial intelligence wanted to find a way to travel across the galaxy without expanding too much energy, it could actually do so successfully by trying to colonize these very unusual rogue planet worlds and by then basically living on them or possibly sustaining themselves on them for millions and billions of years until these worlds come close enough to another star system. In other words, using them as a kind of a free transportation method. And so in that sense, both rogue planets and these unusual super-Earths farther away from their stars currently do represent a very interesting target in our search for potential life somewhere out there that's not planet Earth. Or at least for finding some kind of a liquid ocean planet somewhere out there. Now, until we actually find one, all of this is very theoretical, actually very hypothetical. All of this is based on modeling, and all of this is based on our modern understanding of how we think liquid oceans form on planets. But we only have one example to work with, planet Earth. And in terms of that one example, things here are extremely different from everything else we've discovered so far. Anything from the actual minerals our planet is made from, to the fact that we have a very, very specific moon of a very specific size that was created completely by accident during a planetary collision, to a lot of other details we've discussed in some of the previous videos, including the types of planets present in the solar system. So in that sense, we don't really know if these planets exist, but in theory, they could. And once we discover something else about them, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, check out all of the relevant links in the description below, Maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.